Ninja Foundation was founded to promote press freedom, freedom of expression in West Africa. This is because as West Africa, the people and the countries attempt to build democracy, it's important that the citizens are able to enjoy press freedom and freedom of expression. But I had a board of committed West Africans from the dif different countries, Francophone, Anglophone, Lusophone, who were also committed to human rights, committed to press freedom, committed to labor rights, women's rights, and so on. We forged coalitions, we forged alliances, we forged partnerships with organizations, people, institutions in the region, but also elsewhere in Africa and also in Europe and North America at a global, regional, national level. So it is these linkages, these relationships that helped to solidify the organization. The, the foundation has done a great job uh, and it did so under the leadership of Professor Kwame Kakarin. Uh, a lot of the foundational things have been set in terms of documentation, the track record, the experience, you know, uh, that an organization needs to try. So uh, picking the organization or taking over from him uh, initially was quite difficult, but at that time I believe every NGO was struggling because that's how the field is. I took over at a time when we were, we were seven people, you know, and, and I'm really, really proud of those seven people. And fortunately, those seven people are still, are still with us. Now we are about 28 to 30 people. We have certainly expanded on our programs. And um, the, the numbers of staff is also uh, great in terms of diversity. Right now, for every country, we have a national partner, including in Guinea-Bissau, where we have a physical office and physical staff there. We still work with the national partners. We just set up in Guinea-Bissau, which is a country that is often ignored. Uh, we've just opened up an office there. We've seconded one of our colleagues there, appointed um, two other colleagues you know, from Guinea-Bissau um, to join our colleague Daisy to operationalize that office. And unfortunately, we have uh, a project that is running there now, a three-year project funded by the EU delegation in Guinea-Bissau. O projeto para nós é muito importante. Nos ajudar dentro de três anos, acredito que vamos lançar bases para uma nova imagem da comunicação social. We've made a very significant contribution towards the media environment in the region. Somebody said that uh, this country is a head for journalists. In the Gambia, we, we had to take Gambia to the ECOWAS court, uh, fight for uh, the rights of journalists in that country. Even after Jame, we had to fight for uh, justice for the family of those families of those who were victims of Jame's brutalities in terms of um, financial reparations, um, the government rendering apology to some um, journalists and their families. We've done the same in Benin, where the ecosystem has been supported through a project that we had working with Danida. In Cote d'Ivoire, we did a lot in the post-conflict era to help consolidate the media and position them in a way that they could support the country's democratic um, progress. In Liberia, Sierra Leone, post-conflict to date, we've been quite um, uh, assertive in our engagements there. In 2018, MFWA supported what we call the police media dialogue. The police media dialogue was a groundbreaking initiative because at that time, there was there there was the, the, the relationship between media and and police officers or the or the security sector was one of of lack of trust. Uh, 
c'est le professeur Romain Karikari est venu à Ouagadougou et il est passé visiter le centre de presse Norbert Zongo. Je lui ai un peu raconté l'histoire de Norbert Zongo et du centre. Il a été impressionné, émerveillé. Et il a souhaité que quelque chose puisse être fait entre les deux institutions. Mm -hmm. Et c'est de là qu'il a l'idée d'organiser le Festival international de la liberté d'expression et de la presse Philippe, qui est aujourd'hui devenu une plus grande rencontre des médias. I hold in my hands a compilation by the Media Foundation for West Africa, chronicling what they call press freedom violations in Ghana from January 27 to December 2020. They have chronicled as many as 56 of these violations. Will you consider this compilation by the Media Foundation for West Africa a credible validation? Gentlemen, the Media Foundation for West Africa is a very well respected a civil society organization in the area of uh, press advocacy and press freedoms. I don't have much basis to doubt what they'll put out. Suleimana himself is a very well respected person. Uh, I don't have any basis to doubt what they put out. But I'm sure my brother will agree with me that the validation I'm talking about is not even about the best of works by the best of CSOs. I cannot say that the environment may have been worse without us, but certainly it wouldn't have been as it is without the Media Foundation for West Africa. When the Media Foundation for West Africa wrote to you as minister to complain, you take the pain to check the list of those that have complied and those that have not complied. I referred whatever communication is I, I receive from any entity to the regulator to respond to. There's a symbiotic relationship between what the foundation is doing and what we do at the National Media Commission. What that means is that anytime something happens, there's always a theoretical chance that one of the parties would complain to us. That then puts you in a conflict of interest in early responding because you can't get into the market and start speaking when something happens when you are a mediator. So that creates a gap and that gap is what the Media Foundation for West Africa fills very quickly. Over the years, we can support to media organizations. Prior to the setting up of um, CTTV, for example, we got in consult a consultant from London who worked with the City, City FM team at the time to give them feelings for how to transition, you know, or how they could you know, effectively transition. We've done the same with AYB Media Empire in, in Sierra Leone. Uh, here in Ghana, uh, organizations like Multimedia, we've extended several um, um, amounts of support to, to them. <laughs> foundation organizing courses and training opportunities for our journalists and that has been very refreshing especially bringing together experiences across other African countries against other uh, international journalists and test your work. The biggest support which one wouldn't be able to quantify has been the emotional support that the foundation gives us. I remember any time we've, we've been in, in the space where uh, we've been criticized even unfairly uh, when we are doing what we have to do. The foundation has stood by us. In 2019, I got some threats that were pretty serious and I had to be moved out of the country. So what the Media Foundation did was to uh, check me back into another hotel, my wife and I, and then uh, in the shortest possible time I could imagine, they were able to raise funds and then uh, we had a trip to South Africa. We were there for about a month. And when we came back, I think the tensions were a bit down. Media Foundation through the Media and Good Governance Program has been able to enhance the capacities of media across West Africa. Um, through this capacity enhancement, the media is able to hold uh, uh, officials accountable. We've been able to establish uh, platforms that enhance citizens' authorities' engagement. Through these contributions, we've been able to champion developments in these rural communities 
across Ghana and even beyond. I believe uh, almost every uh, NGO would say that funding has always been a challenge um, for organizations operating in the global south, such as us. Uh, so yes, I wouldn't say we haven't had our own share of the funding challenge. The other thing is, 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 is not easy working in an environment such as ours in West Africa, with uh, the context often changing. Governments are becoming a bit more repressive. And again, you have countries where the term limits are not being respected. But uh, we try to do the best that we can to surmount you know, all um, these challenges and um, help position the media to play the significant role that they have to play. First, let me commend uh, civil society organizations in particular that have made it uh, a point to test the system by applying for information uh, at various ministries, departments, and agencies. And with your permission, let me mention, for example, the Media Foundation for West Africa and the Fourth Estate that have done a lot of these applications. After having worked several years in the area of access to information, to now focus on supporting and accompanying Media Foundation with the Fourth Estate is truly exciting and exactly what we would like to do. It is um, for us very important to support activities that are already taking place in the countries because we see this as beneficial in the um, perspective of uh, sustainability. I'm quite thankful and appreciative of the executive director, Mr. Sule Braima, and the staff. I'm quite happy and grateful with them for the simple reason, simple but very, very crucial reason that they have continued the work of the organization, have expanded the scope of the work of the organization, have strengthened the organization, made it even a bigger organization in the sense of its prestige, its respectability, and its um, uh, support base. I will just say that the organization still has a very good future, and I do hope that the donor organizations will continue to support the organization because they've done a great job of sustaining the organization up to now. And I do hope that they will continue to support the organization in the good work it is doing. I would want to see an organization that is able to even contribute to the media development field much strongly beyond West Africa, particularly in the Central Africa region. I'm hoping that in the coming years, we are able to mobilize a lot more resources, become more stronger in terms of our resource base, become more stronger in terms of our lessons and uh, learnings that we can share with others, become more stronger in terms of the impact that we are able to make in the field of journalism and, and media development and press freedom, and um, also stronger in terms of, you know, um, making the staff who work in the organization you know, uh, much more knowledgeable, happier, and uh, resilient.